it comes when it when it came comes down to like just commitment mm -hmm. to God, I feel like uh, just a lot of young people, young people that I know, young people just from what I'm seeing online, it's just like. <clears throat> why don't they have you know why why don't they have the same hunger and same thirst for the word of god like i do you know and it's just like what are some uh, what are some obstacles that you feel like hinder people's commitment to god i think when people are committed to anything they have a reward that they can tangibly see since heaven is not quite tangible mm -hmm. as far as no one's ever went there and came back you know and told about it i mean some yeah. people you hear books about <clears throat> but it's not a, a a a visual place where you can see uh, a lot of things that comes with being committed to God are more intangible than they are tangible. So a lot of people are looking for tangible things. So people pay tithes for tangible things, yeah. but their hearts are not really seeking after God. See, commitment or, or commitment requires authenticity. When it comes to God, your commitment to God has to be first a heart decision, not just a, well, I guess I'll follow God. So one of the obstacles that, that hinders people our age, millennials, or the people on the cusp of that is because they get so caught up on, well, if I don't see my reward, why be committed to the process? If I don't see the end, if I can't really feel what really comes with that, then why be committed? And so the commitments of being committed to God has more intangible rewards than tangible rewards because God cares about us being loving, being content with joy, being long suffering, being patient, being kind, being, he cares about the fruit of the spirit more so than the results of, of a work ethic. And so many people start things with the end in mind, a tangible end, more so than the intangible things they need now to make it to the end. So I think one of the biggest obstacles is that they cannot physically see or go to where they their commitment lures them to. Most people just got selfish hearts, bro. Yeah. They don't really want God, man. They want what God can give. I tell people, in order to be successful in your spiritual walk with God, seek his heart, not his hand. Most people are seeking his hand. They wonder why relationship is off kilter. But when you seek God's heart, you get access to his hand. But if you seek God's hand without God's heart, you're going to always see that God's hand is empty towards you. Yeah. So <clears throat> what do you feel like makes it hard for people want to want to follow God? Like what's a, what's a characteristic of following God that may be hard for some people to swallow? It's hard because a lot of people don't understand hard work and, and um, uh, repetition and process and endurance. Uh, this culture is very shallow in their resiliency. Yeah. Uh, this culture is very entitled. Entitlement doesn't lead to execution. So when people feel like, <clears throat> you owe me, if they say to society, society owes me, how do you think they feel to God? God, you owe me this. God, I don't have to worship you in spirit and truth. God, I don't have to give generosity, and I don't have to give up this sin because you owe me. Actually, let's look at the reality of the walk of walking with God. Walking with God requires a death. <laughs> the, yeah. the prerequisite to living dying is daily. dying daily. Man, I have to die to myself. Man, these millennials, these individuals do not want to die to themselves, die to their career choice, die to their agendas, die to their love interests, die to their sexuality and their promiscuity. They don't want to die to that. Who wants to die to something that you were born with? until you know the benefits that comes with being reborn. And when you know that being reborn, heaven is the goal, being molded into Jesus' image is the goal, then life, then being committed in this life becomes more fruitful for an individual. But they don't understand the gospel message, yeah. why be consistent to it? Or why be committed to it? Yeah, and one thing like I've been <clears throat> struggling too is with trying to, I, I want to help certain people. Yeah. Like I want to help certain people that I, like I'm friends with or that I know. And it's just mm -hmm. like, I'll be in church and I'll just be like, man, like I need to do, I feel like I need to do more. Like I'm trying to be the example, mm -hmm. but I feel like I need to, to do more. And then I talk to one of my friends and then he's just like, oh, like, no, it's just, you're busy. Like you're, you're just, you're just busy. People are busy. Cause I feel bad when I don't check in on folk, but I'm just like, I want to go to heaven and God be like, you took every friend, every, every family member that would accept me. You took them, you took them with you. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I'm, I'm struggling trying to battle whether or not I should, you know, be not overzealous but invite them to church you know to keep on inviting them to unplug <coughs> stuff like yeah. that or just stay here and live the example and risk the chance of them not seeing it or it's like am i am i do i need to just go out on that limb or do i should, should i just stay here or? like i tell people this there's co-workers i see every day there's families i see every day because i'm living life with them yeah certain people do not want to live life with people because living life with someone requires accountability and you're only required uh, to
to, to, to really disciple people that you're living life with. I'm not saying you gotta be roommates, but I'm saying they're, they're intertwined with some level of community that you have here. So unplug. There's a lot of brothers that unplug that we're living life with. And mm-hmm. as we continue to live life, it gets deeper and it gets broader. And when people start getting married, people start having kids, things will be intertwined a little bit more so we'll yeah. be able to live life. That's what discipleship is, is living life with yeah. people and, and, and being honest and being willing to, to be led by God to help others. But you're not required to help friends that don't want to live life. So don't feel <clears throat> overburdened because you feel like you have to do more. Do what you can, and God honors what you do. do. He honors what you can do. He didn't look at the kid with the five, with the two fish and five loaves and be like, that's not enough. He says, I'm going to use that and multiply it. So as you grow older with God, you're, you begin to broaden your abilities in regards to, to, to making disciples of many men, etc. <clears throat> but don't feel bad if you can't do it. Do what you can. And God will multiply that. He'll maximize that. And then you so young, man, over time, you'll be living life with folks. <laughs> right now, enjoy not living life with folks. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying like, it's like, it gets to that point for me where I'm just like, man, like, a week go by and I don't text anybody, but I'd be feeling bad when I be, when I hear pastor on Sunday, it's just like, like not, not getting, getting people in church, but it's feeling like I'm, I need to do more than just like being, being an example that I'm, I'm being. I feel like I need to do I more because they're saying. not seeing, they, see they're saying. in an environment where they're not going to Bible studies, going to church and stuff like that. So they're in an environment not conducive to trying to, to develop a hunger or thirst for the word of God. I'll tell you this. How did you come to unplug? God led me. That's it. When God leads, all of a sudden, now how many men we have at unplug? Like tens or so mm-hmm. <clears throat> that come on a regular, close to that. So when you understand that God will, know, God will make a way. When you're being led by God, you don't have to worry about what comes along the way. You know you're eventually coming to the things that God requires for us to do in this walk with him. So you don't have to worry about, do I got I to gotta have five people by 25? I should be deciding to 20 people by 35. Yeah. Man, don't worry about that. God will lead you into a place of community where you can be more effective and efficient. God may be requiring you in this season to get the things done, to build it so they will come, to do what you got to do so that in time, <clears throat> How many years was it when there was no dudes at Unplugged? Yeah. It was like two or three of us. And all of a sudden, man, people was saying that Unplugged's a woman's ministry. All they saw was women in the audience. And it was like God in his sovereignty said, okay, now it's time for more men. But I still had to build. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's what I was saying on that. <clears throat> so what was the turning point for you in truly, like, whole, wholly following God? I mean, the turning point came when I was 19 when I realized the seriousness of life, the fragileness of life, that life is a vapor, that any given moment I can lose this life. And and the verse that got me, man, was the Bible says it's appointed for every man to die and after the judgment. When I understood those two ultimate realities, I understood that I, that the gospel of Jesus Christ wasn't something that you have an option to choose or to uh, the option to adhere to either you do or you don't there's no in between with it mm-hmm. a gospel is when someone comes into a region and says this is the gospel of this individual it's a new way of living new way of thinking you either get on board or you go to hell yeah. pretty much <laughs> <laughs> when jesus came on board he was like i am the way the truth and the life no man comes into the father but by me yeah. when he said that he was saying this is the message this ain't you know i'm one of the gods so you have an option he said no i am the way yeah. The truth in life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. That's the gospel message. And when people do, do not adhere to that message, they're basically choosing the opposite of what he wants to provide, which is the kingdom of God. Meaning when I understood like, yo, I, this Jesus is significant. This, this Bible is infallible, that the people who try to go against the Bible die before they can even prove that the Bible was wrong, that the Bible has outlast its accusers. And when I understood that this Bible is real and it shows me my condition, it shows me the Christ, and it shows me what he wants me to do in his life, then I was enamored by the reality. The reality is death will knock on our door. And death is a, is, is, is a trillion and one. The only person it did not pass over was Jesus. Maybe he not. Maybe one and a half. But what I'm trying to say yeah. is that, well, he probably had to die when he went through. But what I'm trying to say is, <clears throat> in this walk with God, yo, I'm going to meet my maker one day. That thing's the scariest thing mm-hmm. is meeting my maker. Not only meeting my maker, but meeting him with my work undone. Meeting him with not ritualistically giving him my best as often as I can. That changed everything for me when I realized 
this call is serious and God is, an ex is expecting a return on his investment. He hides gifts in us for us to discover him and our gifting mm -hmm. and to give him, a, give him glory on earth and a return as far as souls. And when I realized that, I had to be committed because the Bible says, why, if a so why would a soldier entangle himself with civilian affairs when his hope is to please the one who enlisted him? Why do we entangle ourselves as soldiers? When a soldier is in Iraq, when a soldier is in Pal Pakistan, when a soldier is in Afghanistan, they're not sipping tea all the time with the civilians. They're not out there buying houses like the civilians they're soldiers and when I understand I'm a pilgrim passing through I got to take this life seriously because I love him mm -hmm. and when what made me even more in awe of God was when I realized how graciously he pursued me and how graciously that, that how much that grace made me really love the dude like 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 God man like you was there when nobody else was so there were some intellectual yeah. uh, discoveries that helped me draw closer to god but those emotional moments with god when i realized yo he was there with nobody else salute my dude i'm committed to you yeah that's how I, that's how it all came to be that was a process yeah a lot of idols had to die my heart was laid naked before god and he revealed my wickedness and i was like god i'm evil mm -hmm. you're holy how are we in how are we friends yeah. It's like an a interracial couple in, in the 1940s. <laughs> You're yeah. black, uh, I'm white, and we're together. This is dangerous. Yeah. How is this possible? The grace of God made it possible. Yeah. So what do you think <clears throat> young people need to like, realize or what needs to take place or happen for them to want to, to, you know, to, to follow God? You know, is they, it just they, like a God They got to unplug, man. They got to unplug and say, you know what? I am too consumed in this world. I'm too consumed in the way this world thinks and lives. The millennials are so caught up into technology. They're more connected to their phones than they are to God. They open their, they, they, the, I, that's why I tell people, separate your Bible reading away from your phone. Don't just read in your Bible app, read with a book. Separate it because when you're reading the Bible on your phone, you get notifications coming mm -hmm. in. So what I tell people is that there has to be a sacred time, a sacred place for a holy God. And you sacred, you sanctify that place, making it holy for God so you can commune with him often. So life will slow down. The devil has made life go so fast for a reason that we don't make time for stuff that requires time. You got to make time for, th for things that need time. You, you, can't, you can't rush pregnancy. You can't rush crop development. When you rush it, you get GMOs. When you rush it, you get bigger produce that don't have no nutrients in it. And you get relationships that's big online but shallow when it's at home. So what happens is people have to realize that, yo, this thing is serious, man. And, and they have to understand the importance of, of living abandoned for God and saying, God, is you I live for you I die. And I can't be so consumed with that way the world thinks that I lose sight of the rhythms of life, the rhythm of relationship. Relationships require rhythm. When a husband and wife is out of rhythm, a relationship falls. You and God, if y'all out of rhythm, if y'all can't get the dance steps together, this thing won't look nice when it's on stage. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> we got to slow life down, take a deep breath, because when you rush, you miss the moments. And God has a will for us in every day. And we're so busy, so caught up on our agendas or our form of Christianity that we lose sight on what God wants to do. You cannot be on, you can't do the will of God if you're not willing to be with God. And when you're with God, you discover the will of God and you're slowed down. Mm -hmm. You're able to see, you move in strategic, not sporadic. You're specific, not scarce. You know, you know what you're doing. <clears throat> And like one of the biggest things for me, this last question. So one yeah. of the biggest things for me in following God is realizing like my eyes are open to how many stereotypes like yeah. plague us. And as far as like seeing the type of the type of women that there is, having mm -hmm. the, the idea of it, having the idea of what a Christian woman is, and then seeing it's like, whoa, that God got the got, got the cream of the crop, like cream, yeah, the cream, cream. Cr cream of the crop, and then just seeing just all every, every, how they dress, how they dress, how people dress, people act, and everything like that. So how big of a part, you know, how big of a part does, you know, listening to what other people say have, uh, have an effect on people trying to get committed to God? Listen, man, you got you to gotta cut all influences that are not parallel in what the Word of God says or have the same type of character or genuineness that comes with God. Um, people, I tell people, <clears throat> if, you sell, if you surround yourself with comrades or peers, you're going to end up being where your peers are. Your peers, 
You got to, not necessarily peers, but you got to surround yourself with people who are where you want to be. Mm -hmm. You got to surround yourself with people who has a relationship with God that you desire. You got to have, you got to surround yourself with people who has a prayer life that you desire. You got to surround yourself with people that are where you want to go. So iron can sharpen as iron. A dull knife don't sharpen anything. The only thing a dull knife can cut through is butter. You want to surround yourself with people that can get you through forests. They can cut down trees for you. They can uproot trees with you. People that can get through life, but you don't want people that can barely cut through anything. Yeah. And when you begin to see when you begin to see that you're surrounded by people that can't even sharpen you, chances are you got to realize that that's the wrong circle. You're only as strong as the weakest person in your circle. If that person is weak or you're surrounded by weak people that's on your level, you're not going to grow. There are tears, though. You got to be surrounded by people who's where you need to be. You got to surround yourself with people that are where you are, that can hold up your arms. And you got to surround yourself, not surround yourself, but you also got to look down at towards people that you got to bring up as well. Yeah. But... You got to chew the meat, spit out the bone. My mom told me something very valuable. She said, son, everybody is going to give you something that you're going to have to chew the meat and spit out the bone. The only person that's all filet is Jesus. There's no bone in Jesus. Oh, wow. Right? So <clears throat> you don't got to spit out no false doctrine when you hear Jesus. But you got to know him. My sheep know my voice and a stranger that will not follow. Everybody has bone in them and they may have some good. There's some people out there that's probably not even Christian, but they got some gems when it comes to business. They got some gems when it comes to marketing. But I know when they start talking in philosophical thought and they start talking new age, I don't have to listen to that because I have the right filter. Most people have the wrong filter, so they don't know how to process through the negativity, so they accept everything. Yeah. They accept everything that comes to them. You, we got to have the Holy Spirit as the gatekeepers of our ear gate and our eye gate. And let him dictate what goes into the heart because out of the heart flows the issues of life. And a lot of us got a lot of bad issues. We got enough issues to fill up a lot of magazines because we allow so many people to write columns in our magazine. And that when we understand that we need to really have the right authors for our, for, our, for our issues, that out of our life will flow things that's going to benefit others, not be the detriment of others. That's good. That's good stuff, man. All right, man. Good stuff, bro. Yes, sir. Yep.